Linux on the iPod is what today's episode is about. Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be walking you through how you can actually have Linux itself running natively on your iPad. And we're going to use an application called ISH Shell. This is a free application. Thank you so much to this developer. This application is absolutely awesome. So let's go ahead and download this application. And so it's a very quick, lightweight application. We're going to hit open. And here you are. It says, welcome to Alpine Linux. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can all follow along. And it says you can install packages with APK add package. So how do you even use this? So for those of you guys who aren't Linux fans, it's time to get on Linux because Linux is awesome. I do a lot of development, especially on my development servers on DigitalOcean or Linode. A lot of it is handled through Linux servers. And I generally have to go on SSH into a Raspberry Pi to develop in Linux and test things out. I can do that natively on the iPad now, which is awesome. So how do you even get started? So the first thing we want to do is add a couple of packages. So we're going to say, so let's see what APK does. So APK is a package manager and it allows you to go and install as many packages as you can that are available on the store. So you can actually go to ish.app and they have some GitHub support, Discord, Discord server, as well as Twitter. So if you actually go on GitHub, there's a lot of cool tutorials on how to do things. So there's a lot of data here around test flight, Discord server, wikis and tutorials, and just generally how to set this up. So before we do go any further in this video, please like and subscribe this video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And so if you enjoy this, it helps me out as well. So thanks in advance. All right, first and foremost, let's go ahead and make sure that we have everything is updated. So we're gonna say APK update. So it says that there's 4,826 packages available. So we're gonna say APK upgrade. And that's just you want to make sure you're running with the most current um, applications and software. So let's go ahead and clear this out. So let's go ahead and add a couple of packages and I'll show you exactly what you can do with this. I like bash. So APK add bash. You can see that it says downloading and it does it fairly quickly. And the most important package that obviously that I'm going to install after this is Python. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a second as well. So you're going to go APK add Python 3. And now you can run native Python in actual Linux directly on your iPad. None of this SSH into anything or anything like that. It's directly running off of Linux, which is absolutely amazing. All right, now once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and check out the Python version. Sorry, Python 3 version. So you'll see it's running Python 3.8.5, which is cool. Now the other thing I wanna run is pip, but pip isn't found. There's a lot of posts online that says I should be running something like apk add pi3 pip or pip3. Now sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But what I found is when I use that method, I can't for whatever reason install virtual environment. So I went on Reddit and there's a Redditor that posted how to do this. And that is you just go Python 3 M and sure pip. And you do that and then pip is going to get installed. And then while pip gets installed, I have the ability now to go install virtual env after this because for whatever reason, it just wasn't working for me. It was frustrating. I don't want to walk you guys through it because it's just a whole bunch of errors that I got. This method works because I've done it on this iPad before as well as my as well as my iPhone as well. So it's great. So I'll let this run through and then I'll show you how to run some other commands with this. All right, so there you go. Now you see it's installed. So one thing I'm going to give you so a heads up on right now is that when you run pip, so you have to use pip3. When you run pip, one of the things you'll find is pip is, is kind of slow on this, anything that you run through pip. Now that's a small trade-off for me because I want to have native Linux running on this. So that's just one thing to be cautious about when you do run a pip command, don't restart the application, it's just doing its thing and it takes a while. So let's go ahead and install virtual environments. So we're gonna say pip install virtual env. So let's go ahead and clear this out and there's one last package that I wanna add which is one of my favorites and that is OpenSSH. So we're gonna say apk add OpenSSH. And this is gonna allow you to SSH into different machines. And you can, like I said, do that on your iPad. The pay for, and some of them just don't give you the same experience. This is literally like how I log into my Raspberry Pi. 
I'm able to do some of the same development, some of the same testing. I can use this as an actual server and use my iPhone to display something like a Django page on this. So it is awesome from that perspective. But now I'm gonna show you how you can use something like SSH. So for example, I can SSH into a development pie that I have. There's really nothing running off of this. I just use this just to, to test things out really. And you can do something like this. You say yes to the fingerprinting, put in your password. And I need to put in the right password, I guess. I have a lot of these pies running around here, so I don't really know what's and what. Uh, but there you go. Now I've actually, I'm into my actual pie and running almost like I would be running off of my terminal on my Mac. Uh, so really cool that I'm able to do this. And I can also log into my um, DigitalOcean server. I can log into my Linode server. I can log into a whole bunch of different, basically any kind of Linux based server, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and try some things out. So first and foremost, what I want to do is I'm going to go into the home directory and in the home directory, I'm going to create a directory called code. So make dir and then code. You don't have to use sudo in here uh, at all because you're already in root. So you can see that by when I go to ls slash la, everything here is root anyway, so you don't have to use sudo. So let's clear that out. And you can see that I have a directory called code. Let's go into that. And in, in code, I'm actually going to make a virtual environment. So we'll say virtual env venv, but it's going to go ahead and create a virtual environment for us. So the virtual environment is created. So when I ls, you see that it's venv. So we're going to go to source venv bin activate. And that will load up my virtual environment. As you can see, it says venv here in brackets. And now this is where I can go ahead and add a whole bunch of packages. So say for example, pip install selenium. Now I use selenium a lot to do a lot of um, web, web automation, web scraping. Um, I pay my bills sometimes with a bot that I created, which I'll link up above and you can check that one out as well. Um, and I created that bot in Selenium, so I can now technically do this on here. Um, I do a lot of web scraping as well, um, and I can run some of those scripts natively off of this if I want, but I have them scheduled in my Raspberry Pi, so I don't have to worry about that. But it's pretty awesome that you can run stuff like this. Um, again, to run a lot of these Python applications, you may have to buy something. And I've also done a video in the past on a couple of applications that you can buy to run Python, and I'll link that up above as well. And so what's cool with this is when you run it on your iPad, you can always run headless Selenium, which means that you don't need to go ahead and open a browser. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on how to do headless Selenium and maybe pull some prices off of, for example, Best Buy. I created a bot that actually allows you to go and see whether or not the PlayStation 5, for example, is in stock um, with different retailers or not. And you can do that with headless Selenium and you can run that off of this time it, schedule it, do whatever you want. So a lot of cool things from that perspective. The one downside is it won't install things like Pandas. So for whatever reason, Pandas just doesn't run on this yet. Maybe it will in the future. Maybe it will right now, let's see. I'm actually gonna see whether or not they've they fixed it or not, but Pandas does not run on this. And there are other, some other applications that don't run on this. But again, for my purpose, that's okay. I'm, I'm totally fine with that at this point. I know this is something new and I'm just, Grateful to have something like this on the iPad where I can run native Linux because that's why I like doing things. And so what happens is it goes into downloading and then it says that it's going to install and just hangs there for like eternity. So let's see if it does anything right now or not. All right, so this has been running for a full two minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and kill this right now. Um, let's go ahead and clear this out. So for whatever reason, Pandas just doesn't work. Maybe I'll let, let it run overnight. Something will happen. Who knows? So we're gonna go ahead and exit this. Um, and maybe in another future video, I'll show you how to run something like Django or something else. But you know what, let's just go ahead and install Django in here for the heck of it, just to show you that it does work. And you can literally go ahead and host a Django application off of your iPad. You never wanna do that. But just for testing purposes, say you're in, I don't know, outdoor somewhere and you wanna to test to see whether your application is working or not, you can very easily just convert this into a server and then use another device like your iPhone or another computer log in and see what, you know, what your Django server looks like or your Django application looks like. Um, so from that perspective, that's super cool as well. All right, so there goes Django. Um, let me show you a couple of other cool tools that you can use. So you can do something like apk add net tools. 
And so NetTool gives you access to some really cool um, and powerful networking packages, really. All right, some other really cool things. So APK add, obviously you need Vim for some kind of a text editor. You can also use Nano if you want, but I prefer to use Vim myself. And so just to give you an example, I can do something like touch test.py, and then I can that open that up in Vim. So Vim test.py, and you can go ahead and write whatever you want here. So something like import requests, and whatever, you can write whatever Python code you want here. Okay, let's clear that out. And then you can also go ahead and add something like add curl, and then the last one I'll add is like git, for example, for GitHub and wget. Um, and then those are pretty much some of the more, uh, I would say, uh, common packages that I've got on here. So apk add git, and then apk add wget. All right guys, so what I really wanted to do in this video is just show you how to go ahead and install Linux, Alpine Linux more specifically, on your iPad. So if you did enjoy this, please like and subscribe in the future. I will run some more tests with Alpine Linux, run things like Django, run things like perhaps a firewall or something else and show you how all of that stuff is working. So again, thanks very much and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.